In this video, I am going to show you how to convert this quadratic equation, which is written in standard form, to vertex form. And hopefully you remember that standard form is when you have the x squared piece first, plus or minus some number times x, plus or minus some number without a letter. So the first step I'm going to do is to see if I can factor this. And I use the box diamond method, but I'm going to do a shortcut to that. I'm just going to use the diamond piece of the box diamond method. I'm going to make a diamond here. Now, if this process doesn't make sense to you, I made a video called Factoring Trinomials Using the Box Diamond Method, and you might want to go back and watch that. But this is a shortcut to that version. What I'm going to do first is multiply the negative 12 times x squared. And don't forget this minus sign. So minus 12 times x squared is minus 12x squared. And I'm going to put that at the top of the diamond, the minus 12, but I'm not going to include the x squared this time. That's kind of what makes this a shortcut. And then the plus 4x, I'm going to slide down to the bottom of the diamond, but I'm not going to include the x. I'm just going to bring down the plus 4, the middle term right here. And now I'm thinking to myself, are there two numbers that when I multiply, give me minus 12, but when I add those same two numbers, I get a plus 4. Well, hopefully you're thinking negative 2 and 6. Negative 2 and plus 6. Negative 2 plus, or negative 2 times plus 6 is negative 12. And negative 2 plus 6 is a plus 4. So now what I can do is go ahead and factor this. I'm going to put two sets of parentheses, like so. I'm going to put an x here and an x here because x times x is x squared. And then I'm going to slide the minus 2 here. And I'll put the plus 6 right over here and I'm done. I'll bring down my y equals. Now really careful here. This shortcut works, but you should notice there's no number in front of the x squared. If there were a number in front of the x squared, like a 3, a 4, a 5, whatever, this process, there would be extra steps and it'd be a little bit more difficult. I just wanted to remind you of that. So now that I've done this, I can clean this up. I'll clear this out. And what I want to do now is find the x-intercepts of the graph, even though we haven't made the graph yet. But hopefully you remember that the x-intercepts, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis, occurs when y is 0. So I'm going to replace this y with 0 right here. And I'll leave the rest the same. And I'm going to use the zero product property. All I do there is set zero equal to each factor. So I'm going to set zero equal to x minus 2. And make one equation. I'm basically making two equations. Or I could set zero equal to x plus 6. I'll write that down here. And I'm going to solve each one of these equations for x. That'll give us the x-intercept. So let's see, to solve for x here, I'll add 2 to both sides. And that goes to 0. And I'll bring down my x. 0 plus 2 is 2. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll subtract 6 from both sides. The 6 the 6s drop off, I'll bring down my x, and that equals a minus 6. So my x-intercepts occur at 2 and minus 6. And if you don't want to go through this process here, the shortcut is, is just take the opposite of these numbers, right? The x-intercept occurs the opposite of negative 2, which is 2, and the x-intercept occurs at the opposite of 6, which is negative 6. That would be a shortcut to having to go through this. Now we can go ahead and start sketching the graph. And I know that the x-intercepts occur at 2, which I'll say is about right here, and negative 6. And that again, that's from right here, right? One x-intercept is 2. The other x-intercept is minus 6. And I need to find the vertex. And that always occurs at the halfway point between negative 6 and 2, which is maybe right here. But I need to find this x-coordinate here. so. One way to do it is just 
find the midpoint of negative 6 and 2. And one way to look at that is just take the average of these two numbers. So I'm going to take the negative 6 plus 2. I'll add this and this. And I'll take half of it or divide it by 2 because I'm finding the halfway point. Another reason I'm dividing by 2 is because there's two x-intercepts, right? So you add these up and divide by 2 to find the midpoint. And I put parentheses here because I want to do the addition first. So let's see, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 divided by 2. Well, let's see what's negative 4 divided by 2. That's negative 2. So the midpoint occurs right here at negative 2. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex from right here. Now again, these are going to be my x-intercepts, so the graph's going to go through these points, so let me put points here. And now all I need to do is to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, so let me show you how to do that next. I can start cleaning some of this stuff out right here. I won't need this anymore. Let me clear this out as well. And to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, what you need to do is put this negative 2. Remember, these are my x values. So this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. So I need to put this x value of negative 2 in either the top or bottom equation. It doesn't matter. I think the bottom one's easier to work with. So let's do that. So I'm going to write y equals, and I'm going to replace this x with negative 2. So right here, replace this with negative 2. Bring down this minus 2 times and then replace this x with negative 2 from right here, plus 6. And let's simplify this so it becomes y equals, well, what's negative 2 minus 2? That's minus 4 times negative 2 plus 6 is 4. And negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. So the y-coordinate of the vertex occurs at negative 16 from right here. That's all the way down here at negative 16. So the coordinate of the vertex is negative 2, negative 16. Right here. Remember that negative 16 is from right here. And now I can sketch my graph. I have the vertex and I have my x-intercept, so let's do that. Should look like the letter U kind of does. You get the idea, I hope. The reason it looks like the letter U is because of this x squared piece. Now, there's one other point on here that you know as well. This point here, this actually crosses right here. This is called the y-intercept. This graph crosses the y-intercept at negative 12, right here. And I know that because of the standard form. That's what's cool about the standard form. The standard form tells us the y-intercept, this minus 12. So I actually know this piece as well, even though I don't need to include it. But it does cross the y-axis at minus 12 from right here. So each different form tells you inf different information about the graph. Now I'm pretty much done. All I need to do is write this equation in the, the equation for this graph in vertex form. So here's my vertex, and this occurs at negative 2, negative 16. This is my x-coordinate, y-coordinate, but I'm going to write it as hk because it's the vertex, and that'll make sense in a second. So instead of putting xy, I'm going to put the hk value here because the vertex occurs at hk, and I'll show you why I did that in a second. Let me clear this out now, and we can go ahead and write this equation now in vertex form, and this is vertex form. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And remember, that's the goal of this video, is to convert this to this form. Now the a value, well actually we're going to substitute for three things, the a, the h, and the k. 
the a value is what the x squared was multiplied by all the way back at the beginning of the problem. So this x squared is multiplied by 1. There's an implied 1 here. It's just not shown because 1 times x squared is just x squared. And my hk value are right here. My h value is negative 2. My k value is minus 16. So let's plug that into the equation. So we're going to have y equals the a value is 1. So I'll replace a with 1. Bring down my x. Bring down my minus sign. And the h value is right here. It's minus 2. So I am going to replace this h with minus 2. Bring down your squared plus, I'm going to replace this k with this minus 16 right here. Let's just clean this up. So we have y equals, I don't need to show that one when I'm multiplying. And this becomes x. Well, when I subtract negative, that turns to positive. Bring down your 2, bring down your squared. And adding negative is the same as subtracting. There we go. That's vertex form. And we are finished. So three big forms. Standard form, and you need to know all three. Standard. And what's nice about standard form is it tells you this minus 12, the number at the end of the equation gives you the y-intercept right here. It gives you that y-intercept. Then there's factored form. What's nice about the factored form is that you can find the x-intercepts from the factored form and then the vertex form right here. And what's nice about vertex form is that you can identify the coordinates of the vertex right here. So three big forms that, you, that you'll need to know. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day.